All right, everyone, time to talk about the Washington Post. Uh, this is fairly big news, and it's spawned so many memes already in the last, you know, like 10 hours that it's monumental. Um, basically, there was an obituary post for al-Baghdadi. It's a big, long post, by the way. It's multiple pages. Um, by I think his name is Jody Warwick. And by the way, no relation to the Warwicks. We're a separate branch than these uh, <laughs> goofballs who sold out to the lame stream, I guess calling al-Baghdadi an austere religious scholar. The original title of the article involved him being a religious scholar, having been killed in the U.S. strikes. Uh, they quickly changed that, and then I guess a representative from WAPO came out. And there's an archive link in the description. When I first saw this, when I saw this claimed, and there was no archive, just screen caps supposedly of the story, I said, oh, this, this is bullshit. Somebody used Grease Monkey or somebody, you know, there was a gremlin in the system. Some troll at Washington Post on their last day of work altered it before walking out the door in 10 minutes, then took a screen cap of it, put it on 4chan, and then walked out or something. I figured it was a joke. It was real. And then the, the representative comes out and says, well, we're sorry about the title. Yeah, that was bad. It was never meant to be titled that way. I'm sitting there asking myself, then why was it? Through what mechanism did you accidentally call al-Baghdadi a religious scholar instead of a violent Islamofascist fanatic, which is what he actually is? Violent serial killer, cult leader, whatever you want to call him. Austere religious scholar doesn't quite do justice to al-Baghdadi. And then people took the meme, and they're like, for every, for every terrible person who has ever died, they're like, they're like, uh... Uh, vegetarian food enthusiast Mao Zedong dies. <laughs> so, uh, renowned artist and animal rights activist Adolf Hitler dies. Uh, you know, for like Stalin and Pol Pot and all these different figures. And, you know, having a field day, and it becomes funny, but it's, it's no joke. That there are people out there who actually believe what they read on the Washington Post. And there are people who will take the, uh, the apology seriously. Oh, we're sorry. It wasn't meant to be titled Austere Religious Scholar. Again, how did that get in there? Did you copy-paste it from the, the article? Because I think the, the term religious scholar was used at one point in the first paragraph, but I don't think any of the other wording was. How did it accidentally end up getting titled this way? Is this, did, you, did this person suggest different possible titles, send it to the editor, and they chose the wrong one inadvertently, like send it back in an email, and they slapped the title in, and they're like, oh shit, no, change it quick. No, 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 not that one. I meant, I meant number two, not number three. Is that what happened? Was this an editorial blunder? Or did this person just say, fuck the editor. This is breaking news. I want more people to see it. I'm just going to slap it on there. Or maybe it was an attempt to get more attention. Because the Washington Post, like most of these legacy media outlets, thrives on ad revenue. And so views are good. It doesn't matter if they're coming from people that are pissed off or bemused at the fact that you couldn't get your article's title right. So, hey, they definitely got more views for that because then people looked up Austere Religious Scholar and it directed them to the article as well as the Washington Post at large. Cha-ching, how many tens of grands did they make off of that mistake? I don't think it was a mistake at all. I think that they didn't realize people would flip out about it. They thought that that titling was actually in their wildest dreams appropriate. And then when push came to shove, when you know, a million people told them to fuck off, oh, it was an accident, everybody. We're sorry. We're sorry that we grabbed up an extra 50 grand in ad clicks in the last hour. I wouldn't put it past them. Washington Post is right up there with the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and some of these other groups, the BuzzFeeds and so forth. Uh, propaganda legacy media outlet. They're tabloids now. In the post-Trump era, these groups have devolved into tabloids in which, because of the structure of the internet and the way income is generated, clickbait is more and more common. Now, they'll call it out if it's some YouTuber doing this. Oh, YouTubers uh, screw with the titles and description in order to sell fear porn and make more money. YouTube encourages it. They'll have a big problem, a big expose about something like that or spam online, but they never actually aim that criticism within. They don't even criticize each other anymore. Remember like 10 years ago, groups like Fox and CNN used to fire across the bow at one another all the time. Now they team up. They're buddy-buddy. They love each other. Oh, such, Jake Tapper is such a wonderful guy, say, uh, says Rachel Maddow, essentially. There's a reason for that. They're colluding together. They realize that they're all, shit, they're all fish in a shrinking pond, and they're trying to take over our pond instead because uh, it's bigger and actually growing. 
You see, they're worried about going extinct and they're tired of having to eat one another's poop, so they're, they want to eat our shit instead. It's basically what the Washington Post boils down to. It's funny because I think, isn't WAPO an Amazon subsidiary now? I, say, I have no problem with Amazon. A lot of people do. I'm biased because I use publishing on demand there. Uh, but with the Washington Post, yeah, yeah, I have a problem with their editorializing. I have a problem with their so-called journalism because it's not really ethical. <laughs> There's no integrity there. It's not, it's not the worst. I think if I had to give one of them the title of worst, it'd be The Atlantic. Like, they're the most clickbaitian out there. Business Insider is close. And then probably The Wall Street Journal. WAPO would be maybe fourth or around where the New York Times and CNN and some of these groups are. I think The Atlantic is the worst. My God, they don't even try. If, they, if, the, if this were The Atlantic who that dreamed this up, they wouldn't change it. Well, he was a religious scholar. Yeah, but by the way, they'd be checking the dictionary definition for austere to make sure they got it right. <laughs> It'd be funny. Wow. Oh, man. The, the memes of it, though, are hilarious. Like, literally, like, you know, uh, think of a terrible person and you can write a little obituary blurb about them that would basically rip this off. There was even a hashtag for it, but I can't remember which one was in use. It's kind of tired at the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, come on, at least try. At least try to look like you're trying. In the case of the Washington Post, that even that little bit is beyond them. That's about all. Peace out.